Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher from We Are Film, and today I want to come to you with a basic tutorial on saving and exporting in DaVinci Resolve 16 and 17. Now, technically, the 14 and 15 would be just about the same, but 16 and 17 and 17.1 are pretty much the modern ones now. So, let's say you've gone through and you've edited your timeline here, and you have everything ready to go, and I have this video right here that I want to export, and you're ready to export it, so what now? Well, the first thing I want to do is go over to the Deliver tab. Now, I want to preface something before and while we're on this Deliver tab, and that is if you are on the free version, you're only going to be exporting in 1080p. If you were in the studio version, you will have the ability to export and save in 4K or above or whatever file type. So I'm just giving you a heads up now. Now, right over here to the left, you're going to see all of the ways to save and render out the video locations, different types, we'll talk about in a second. We have our frame here, we have kind of our clips and our uh, timeline, and then we have our render queue. So I'm going to clear this because this is what uh, yours is going to look like. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple different things. So first off, you can of course select from any of these pre-made ones up here already. And these are awesome because if you're going to YouTube or Vimeo, whatever it may be, you can easily set the parameters very quick. Now down here is going to be the file name, the location, so I'm going to click browse. And I'm going to put this on my desktop just for right now. Click save. And then uh, we'll talk about naming the file name in a second because I like to do it somewhere else. Now in this, kick, uh, in this case, we're going to render a single clip. You can do individual clips, which would render each clip as their own. So this is great if you're doing a color workflow and you want to change things up. But for most people, single clip is fine. Now in your video, you want to make sure that export is checked. And this is where you pick your file type. So in most cases, you're going to want to do MP4. And then H.264, H.265. This is for most YouTube or, I mean, honestly, in most case scenarios, this is going to be most of it. Now, down here is your resolution and your frame rate. So in my case, I want to do this at uh, Ultra HD or 4K. And the frame rate is going to be the same. But you could, of course, change it and you can change anything you want. You could go in and do 1080. Um, and yeah, you can, you can do whatever you want. But in my case, 1080 will be just fine for now, uh, just because it's a test anyway. So quality, you want to usually keep automatic. Um, if you want to do more here, you can dive in deeper to restricting it to a certain uh, bit rate or bit depth. Um, you can also do these type of encoding profiles and stuff like this. But to be honest with you, I've never, ever even touched any of these. So if you don't even know what this is, you don't need it. Uh, down in the advanced tab, this is, again, some more stuff you have if you needed to do some certain things. In most cases, you're not going to. And if you do have subtitles down here, you can either do it as a separate file or burn it into the video, uh, export as the type of file type. So that's for that. Next, you want to go to the audio tab. And in here, you want to make sure you have the export audio selected. And this is where you uh, change your, you know, the type of codec, which typically this will change based on whatever you're doing. So I usually just leave this as is. But of course, you could change it if for whatever reason you had to for the, the project or whatever you're doing. Or uncheck it if you didn't want to record or, uh, you know, export audio. And then this is where I do the actual file naming. So in my case, I'm going to call this test video. Um, you could change the suffix of it. You could do a file subfolder. Uh, you can use um, eight digits in the file name. Each clip starts with you know different stuff, some, some time codes. This is mainly if you're doing things at uh, the individual clip level. You can also do render speed. Uh, yeah. Again, you, you're probably not going to do too much unless you're just changing this, or you could always go with the timeline name. In my case, I want to go with the um, custom name. That way I can customize it and it's just right test. So again, right now we have video, MP4, HI264, 1080, and we have our audio checked in our file. And what we're going to do is we're going to click Add to Render Queue. And this is going to pop on over here to our Render Queue. Now you can see there's a couple different things up here. This is the remote rendering, so if you have something separate set up like a NAS, you can run that on another machine. Uh, you can go back and edit whichever one of those. Uh, you can also delete it, so we can get rid of it, add it back. And then whenever you have that selected and ready to go, you can just click Render All. Um, so if you had multiples here, it would render multiple jobs. Um, it's super handy if you want to have a few jobs. So you could do, like, okay, let's do that one. Let's do a 720p Twitter one. And then maybe just a Premiere XML. Boom. So now we have three different jobs, and I can just... Uh, click render all or just render the one whatever you want to do once you click render it is going to save and then it'll be there so I'm just gonna click the the um, little Twitter one here so that way it can crunch through and we're gonna see it on the desktop in a second so you can also click stop down there so in this case I stop that render and of course I can get rid of these 
And let's say you did render and, it, and it, you know something happened. You can also right click and click clear render status. And then boom, it goes back to being unrendered. But yeah, so it's pretty simple. Most times, most of these up here are going to help you. Um, I usually just do custom because I like to have a little bit of control. But you can see it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. And you can easily save and export all of your projects in DaVinci Resolve that easy. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know any tutorials that you want to see. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later.